This video was made possible by The Great Courses Plus. Follow the link at the end of this video to start your free trial today. The short history of space travel is full of amazing breakthroughs, discoveries, and successes, from putting the first satellite into orbit to landing the first humans on the moon. People like Yuri Gagarin and Neil Armstrong will go down in history as legends of the early days of space exploration, and they certainly deserve it, but not every space mission is so successful. Since the late 1940s, attempts to leave Earth have been the cause of a number of tragic accidents and necessary sacrifices. But just how bad is the fatality rate? How many lives have been lost in the pursuit of new discoveries in space? Over a decade before Yuri Gagarin would become the first man in space, NASA and other worldwide space agencies were already testing the dangers of leaving Earth's atmosphere by launching animals into orbit. With these projects, scientists hope to learn more about the effects of radiation and weightlessness on biology without risking the lives of human beings. The first passengers on such a trip were a small batch of fruit flies launched in 1947 aboard a V-2 rocket. Surprisingly, these tiny astronauts survived the trip, leading to the use of more advanced creatures. Unfortunately, after this initial success, the failure rate became much more severe. On June 14, 1949, a rhesus monkey named Albert II became the first primate to reach space. His predecessor, the original Albert, had died of suffocation on a subspace flight about one year earlier. Albert II's success was not to last, unfortunately, as he died on impact after a parachute failure during re-entry. Albert III was launched on his V-2 rocket later that same year, but died when the rocket exploded at an altitude of about 11 kilometers. This attempt was followed by the launch of, you guessed it, Albert IV, who also died on impact due to a parachute failure. If you're wondering why one family of monkeys named Albert got so unlucky, you'll be happy to hear that they weren't all related. As a matter of fact, Albert III was actually an entirely different species of monkey. Naming the little astronauts Albert had simply become a tradition, and the whole Monkeys in Space project later became known as the Albert Program. All told, at least 32 primates have flown in the various monkey space programs around the world, of which at least 12 have died during the flight or landing. That gives the recorded test flights using monkeys a 37.5% fatality rate. Besides primates, the most notable animals to venture into space have been dogs. During the 1950s and 60s, the United States and the Soviet Union were locked in a tense battle to be the first to successfully reach space. For their animal tests, the Soviets thought that dogs would be the perfect test subject because they would be more comfortable with prolonged periods of inactivity than monkeys would. They made sure to use stray dogs rather than house dogs because strays were much hardier and were thought to be able to handle the extreme stress of spaceflight more easily. Surprisingly, the first two dogs to become official suborbital cosmonauts landed safely after their flight in 1951. The second test flight, which consisted of one new dog and one veteran from the first flight, was not so successful, and both dogs were killed because the landing capsule's parachute failed to deploy. The most famous of the Soviet Union's space dogs was named Laika, who became the first Earth-born creature, besides microbes, to enter orbit around Earth. Laika was launched aboard Sputnik 2 on November 3, 1957. The poor dog was doomed from the start. Production on Sputnik 2 was rushed to allow its launch to coincide with the one-month anniversary of the first Sputnik, which meant that the Soviet scientists didn't have adequate time to prepare for a living creature's safety. Laika died somewhere between five and seven hours into the flight of panic and overheating. After her death, Laika was honored as a hero of the Soviet Union and has been remembered in many countries with a series of commemorative stamps. The Soviet space dog program was, for the most part, very successful, of the 50 or so dogs sent on suborbital or space flights, the fatalities number in the single digits, putting the fatality rate somewhere around 10 to 20 percent. Besides dogs and monkeys, a whole menagerie of other animals and insects has been sent on space missions over the years. Mice, cats, chimpanzees, geckos, guinea pigs, hamsters, rabbits, turtles, mealworms, frogs, and countless others. The combined fatality rate of all organisms sent into space is estimated by some to be as much as 33 percent. As unfortunate as the many animal deaths are, they've been critical in helping scientists understand the effects space travel can have on biology. Because of their sacrifices, the number of human deaths has been relatively small. That being said, there have been a handful of tragic accidents since the beginning of manned space missions, and when taken as a percentage of the small portion of the population that's actually involved in these missions, the numbers appear more serious. The first fatal space disaster involving humans was the crash of the Soviet Soyuz 1 capsule in 1967. Cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov knew he was doomed during his descent when his capsule's parachute failed to deploy. 
Recordings of the cosmonaut's last communications with ground control supposedly captured his final moments as he, quote, cried with rage at the engineers who built the faulty craft. Four years later, the three cosmonauts aboard the Soyuz 11 craft earned the unfortunate recognition of becoming the first and so far only humans to die in space. When the Soyuz 11 detached from the Russian Salyut 1 space station, a ventilation valve ruptured somewhere on the craft, exposing the cosmonauts to the vacuum of space. The three men died within seconds, but since the capsule was guided by an automatic return system, it was not until recovery teams opened the capsule that they discovered the fate of the unfortunate crew. The next major accident was one that burned itself into the collective memory of the entire world. On January 28, 1986, the space shuttle Challenger exploded 73 seconds after liftoff, as tens of thousands watched in person or on live television. The explosion and resulting impact into the water killed all seven crew members, marking the worst space mission disaster in history up till that point. The cause of the failure has been the source of controversy since the incident, with many suggesting that NASA should have canceled the launch given the information they had. The weather in Florida had been unusually cold, and caused a rubber o-ring seal to fail, setting in motion a series of failures that caused the near total disintegration of the craft. The most recent fatal accident occurred on February 2, 2003. The space shuttle Columbia was on its way home from a two-week mission. During the shuttle's launch, a piece of foam insulation had broken away from the external tank and damaged the shuttle's thermal protection system. When Columbia began re-entry, the damage caused the failure of the shuttle's left wing, and the spacecraft ultimately broke apart. In total, these four accidents have caused the deaths of 18 brave men and women, who died pursuing the noble goal of furthering humanity's understanding of our place in the universe. That gives manned spaceflight missions a fatality rate of about 3%. While it doesn't sound like much, it's a sobering reminder that the pursuit of knowledge is often dangerous, and that human life is fragile. As we press on, farther and farther into space, remember the brave souls who paid the ultimate price for the sake of mankind, and know that because of their sacrifice, we can be better prepared for the challenges of the future. Now, I absolutely have to thank my incredible sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription, on-demand video service with amazing lectures and courses from top professors from the Ivy League and other great universities around the world, and from places like National Geographic, the Smithsonian, and the Culinary Institute of America. With The Great Courses Plus, you get unlimited access to a huge library of thousands of video lectures about anything you could possibly want to learn about. Whether you're interested in astronomy, history, math, literature, or any of hundreds of other fascinating topics. If you liked this video, I highly recommend their series on Understanding the Universe, a course with 96 lectures on the grandest subject of all, our amazing universe. It's my favorite course so far, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it too. You can watch this amazing series and so much more when you sign up for your free 30-day trial by following the link on your screen or in the description below. Visit thegreatcoursesplus.com slash second thought and leave a comment down below with the course that seems most interesting to you. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other space-themed videos by clicking here or watch all my videos by clicking here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.